Alfred Hitchcock has, without a doubt, one of the most celebrated discographies of any film director in history. From classics such as Psycho, Rare Window, and Vertigo, he gripped moviegoers throughout the decades with his mastery of thrill and suspense. However, in his long list of creations, one movie in particular stood the test of time and, like fine wine, became better as it aged. In 1948, Hitchcock released his first Technicolor film, Rope. Two young, privileged, educated men decide to strangle their former classmate to death as an intellectual exercise, subscribing to Nietzsche's belief in an ubermensch or a superman. Good and evil, right and wrong, were invented for the ordinary average man, the inferior man, because he needs them. And obviously you agree with Nietzsche and his theory of the superman. Yes, I do. So did Hitler. After doing the deed, they threw a small dinner party with the victim's girlfriend, best friend, aunt, and father serving them food atop his grave. An interesting enough plot, isn't it? But aside from the strength of its narrative, the movie is mostly carried by our villain-slash-main characters, Brandon Shaw, played by John Dahl, and Philip Morgan, played by Farley Granger. Right from the first few minutes, you can tell that Brandon is the more dominant of the two. He's calm, cool, and seemingly aroused by the fact that they had just killed a man. I don't know, really. I don't remember feeling very much of anything until his body went limp and I knew it was over and then then I felt tremendously exhilarated how did you feel remorse is a word he is unfamiliar with it was his idea after all to serve their feast on top of the book chest where they'd hid David's body Brandon is a natural charmer, his antics often seeming cheeky instead of manipulative. In contrast to Brandon's unsettling confidence, Philip is the more sensitive and emotional of the two. Throughout the film, he drags his form along the apartment, just a bundle of nerves. A handful of people assume that he's actually guilty of what he'd done. On the contrary, I believe that his behavior is only triggered by the fact that he doesn't want to get caught. This is starkly different from Brandon, who at times almost seems like he wants everyone, especially their old mentor Rupert Cadell, to know about their crime. Philip was the one who'd strangled David. He's really just as horrible as Brandon, albeit being more cautious. Understandably so. You're not frightened anymore, are you, Philip? No. Not even of me? No. You just astound me, as always. Individually, they're big characters. Together, their dynamic is a sight to see. It is no secret that there is homoerotic tension between Brandon and Philip. See, they are two young, handsome bachelors cohabitating, their lives greatly intertwined. Brandon invests time and energy in Philip's career, and to top it all off, they go on vacations together. Even the opening scene of them can be analyzed as two queer people who have just finished being intimate and illicit. The panting, the cigarettes after sex, the doing it in the dark. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that they're more than just friends. Their source material ropes end by Patrick Hamilton and that place inspiration, the murders of Leopold and Loeb, were explicit in mentioning that the two killers are queer. Despite zero mention of homosexuality in the film, it is heavily implied in a known fact between cast and crew. However, since the Hays Code prohibited them from outright saying Brandon and Philip are lovers, they did their best to at least portray them as such. Rope is obviously about homosexuals. The word was never mentioned. Not by Hitch, not by anybody at Warner's where it was filmed. It was referred to as It. They were going to do a picture about It. And the actors were it. Gay murder boyfriends in the late 1940s. How fitting. Their power dynamic on screen sees Brandon on top, ordering Philip around and scolding him for his emotions. Perhaps we can assume it was Brandon who first got the idea of committing murder. Perhaps it was he who also coerced Philip into doing it with him. After all, You frightened me. You always have. From that very first day in prep school. Part of your charm, I suppose. 
However, there are small glimpses into their relationship that depict Brandon as backing off when Philip tells him to do so. At the very least, Brandon seems to respect Philip and regard him highly. He did ask him to be his accomplice in their blessed crime after all. Clearly, Brandon sees Philip as a superior man, but perhaps not as superior as him. Though let's not forget that we're seeing these two characters in the biggest, most intense and climactic two-ish hours of their lives, drawing a definite conclusion on the relationship based on such extreme circumstances might not be the best idea. But we know enough, and we know this. Brandon and Philip are consumed by their egos, fueled by arrogance and the belief that they belong to a higher class of people who are untouchable. They may have behaved differently from each other after the crime, but they're both as cruel for committing it. That's what makes them interesting characters, and that's why they killed it in Rope.